Resistance Season 2 Thoughts. And yeah, so spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including this season. And yeah, um, now that I've watched the entire show, I like okay each of the, you know, both seasons and all of the episodes. And I will be doing a spoiler free review after recording this now that I have watched all of it. And uh, let's see. Yeah, so I'm not going to get into the following every single episode section in this video. So I'm just briefly going to say, uh, you know, the action continues to be uh, quite good. Uh, you know, tense and exciting. And yeah. So let's dive right in to the first episode of the season, Into the Unknown. So yeah, we, we learned that the First Order are determined to either take over or destroy the Colossus. I appreciate the zero-G element is set up very early in the episode. They get a lot of mileage out of it. I would say two-thirds of the time I laughed when they wanted me to. And the Nazi Rollies back are still there, I guess. Yeah, I like the Zero Gravity Party in Etsy's. And yeah, so this episode sets up, you know, Tam is helping the First Order, although also having some doubts about working against Kaz and the Colossus. And I think they did fine on that element over the course of the season. I like this episode, but the moment that they threatened Niku's safety, I was like, okay, if he's off the show, I stop watching. It is sweet that Tora worries about Kaz. And we see that the Nazi Roly waited for the communications to be fixed so it could tell the First Order where the Colossus was. They managed to shoot it out in airlock. The kids see more movies. And <clears throat> that brings us to episode two, a quick salvage run. And yeah, we're told the Colossus is running out of some very important things. Kaz's family survived, they were off world. Rucker has also joined the First Order, which is honestly no surprise at all. And the, yeah, you know, the, the, this is basically the payoff to. Rucker's conflict with Kaz in, in season one and him being selfish and reckless. And yeah, we see the base has been destroyed. The pirates agree to help in exchange for a favor. Niku asks one of the pirates about being a pirate and then ends up pirating for a few minutes. Very tense when they get the fuel and manage to activate it so they can leave just in time. And, yeah, I, I would say overall I did like Season 2 more than Season 1. Which brings us into the third episode, Live Fire. Not to be confused with Live Wire. I know that the Aces think they're hot ship, but nobody puts Nico in the corner. Yeager wants to train them, does prove they need to work as a unit, and then the creature shows up for them to work together to take out. And Tam thought she would make squad leader, but she's told they're all about survival of the fittest. This is true of fascism. It destroys those it sees as weak. And we see that in the finale as well. And Hype accepts Kaz as one of the aces. Episode 4, Hunt on Seltzer 3. They're out of food. They only have one box of Pop-Tarts left, and it's cherry. Yuck. Mass starvation may be the only way the show stops featuring Gorg, so I'm okay with it. I really wish the show had empathy for the alcoholic instead of having him cry pathetically about not having alcohol to drink. American media, in general, really needs way more empathy for alcoholics and addicts. And the episode brings up the possibility of mutiny. Pirates try to get the creature, end up having to retreat, 
and the pirates take Kazator ships. Wow. Kaz only will take one shot, one opportunity. Sonara gets the pirates to apologize. Very responsible older sister energy. I like that. I wish they'd done more with that. That was that was very, very fun. But just like the image of the you know. We're sorry that we, you know, they're pirates, you know, you're, they're, they're supposed to be these tough, you know, but, you know, Sonara can get the, the, just, yeah, can get that out of them. Niku brought back the sky and is happy about the food again. And that brings us to episode five, The Engineer. Lots of weapons for a rescue. I mean, she's not wrong. We get some more world building about the world destruction. Your data is wrong. At first I thought there was going to be an alternative facts attack on MAGA kind of thing. It turns out to be a message about trusting people that you do not like, so I still approve. Niku realizes it's been a long time since he talked about his past. It is sweet that his family sacrificed for him. I didn't come here to fix. Then you're doing a terrible job. <laughs> many see, many people on the spectrum do have a sense of humor. I love Niku. I I I guess it's not very like let's see. I mean he's not gonna be on Actually, do we know if he is? I mean he he appears as a teenager, but do Nikto age the same as humans? I would really love for him to be on the the uh the Ahsoka show, but then they're already bringing back a bunch of rebels people, so, you know, it's okay if, if not, but, yeah. Sonara does make some good points, and we learn Nina was sent by the First Order, which does make sense. It was ridiculously convenient that they get an engineer exactly when they need one. I do like the detail that Nina does, shoot, does not shoot a Niku, only Kaz, and seems legitimately upset that Niku seemingly betrayed her, and he does not want her to think that. And the pirates do help, because of it, they're able to escape the First Order, who will execute Nina if they find her again. I think it's too bad that they didn't bring her back, like if Tam gets a redemption arc, I feel like Nina, you know, given her tragic backstory, you could understand, yeah. <clears throat> I guess maybe if they had more seasons, she would have later reappeared. Let's see. And Kaz says, it is a good thing that Niku is so open, and I agree. Honestly, if I was still buying, like, toys, which I'm not saying there's something wrong with doing that as an adult, but I don't. You know, I would almost definitely buy Niku and if they, I mean, they probably made N Nina toys as well. And that brings us to episode 6, From Beneath. So, Deep Core Drilling released dragons, so in addition to being Lord of the Rings thing of dwarves digging too deep for gold, which is unfortunately an anti-Semitic stereotype, but it is also good to message against greed, this is also clearly about oil. You don't drill for gold, and gold is not fuel. So, it's a pro-green message. Love it. Flix used to try to be a cantina singer. You know, a number of gay men do perform in that kind of otherwise traditionally feminine capacity and find it empowering, so good. We're gonna crash. Shouldn't have eaten that much sugar. Anyway, I think it's a bigger deal that the elevator is gonna crash with you on it, no less. So, they keep doing thing where... Uh, Flank does not believe in the dragon, which doesn't completely work for the metaphor. Because the people responsible for oil drilling knows that it's bad, they just don't care, and likely cannot be made to care, unlike Flanks. Uh, you know, and I get what they're doing by having Flanks be the one put in danger by the oil drilling causing harm. I think it would have made more sense for it to be Flick, since the people who cause harm doing stuff like oil drilling, the ones getting rich off it, don't immediately face consequences. It hurts other people. I'm kidding. I love the guy. So this gay man is going to uh, let's see, push himself in order to help out, even rescue the man he loves. This can help point out to young viewers that 
being gay does not mean that you don't feel love, which many conservatives, you know, they claim that it's not love, it's just lust. Important message, well communicated. And that brings us to episode 7, The Relic Raiders. You just had to touch it, didn't you? Lady, there are kids watching. Don't move. Be silent. You haven't been watching the show, have you? As long as we don't get caught, we'll be okay. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what, what stealth game you're in, because, like, some of them, they'll just be 100% alert for the rest of the level. You know, others they'll forget within a certain amount of seconds. And once they're back on the ship, she closes her eyes and it's completely still. I wondered if Mika the Grey had become Mika the White, but no, she's just asleep. And that brings us to episode 8, Rendezvous Point. I know it's Rendezvous. We have other ways of getting you to talk. Take her to the cell and ready up the recordings of that song from Jabba's Palace. Have we met before? Tam, if you don't take off the helmet, you're basically asking her if, one, she has met literally every single First Order trooper, two, she can tell them apart, and three, she remembers you specifically. So I think it's a no. And Rucklin shows new depths of how awful he is. Did I accidentally call him Rucker when I talked about the character in my Season 1 video? Oops. Oops. The cake is a sweet idea. And Captain Doze is watching the holographic message. Tora comes in. One of them points out they do still have each other. Very sweet ending. And... Episode... 9. The Vox Vortex 5000. Yeah, not not a huge fan of the, the filler episodes of this season. I, I don't know why. I, you know, completely... Irrelevant to this particular episode. Another racing episode. We made another hut. Not bad. He suggests Space Jam 1 rules. Not that the movie rules, but the rules seen in that movie. And he, of course, doesn't play fair. This episode demonstrates the idiom that the house always wins, unless the house is owned by Donald Trump. Those are some massive, jacked Kowakians monkey lizards. They must be pretty deep into the Star Wars Galaxy version of Roids. I really love how much Niku got to help in this episode. Which brings us into the next episode. Episode 10, Kaz's Curse. You're going to have to be more specific. I think he has a few. So this has one of the pirates do basically a Roma curse, which is an incredibly hateful racist idea. So. Disappointed to see that it's still around. I do appreciate the episode exploring the supernatural versus science. Uh, you know, Kaz keeps insisting it's not a real curse. And, you know, uh, Niku and, and others are like, ooh, something went wrong. Curse. You know, the, the you know, Kaz, things go wrong around him. It's, yeah. And Mika is now basically acting a fortune teller for money, and as we find out at the end of the episode, this is just because people believe that she can more than that she thinks that it's real. And, I mean, it's not the most dishonest way to make money on the Colossus. This is just a coincidence. More like curse incidents. They did it. They found a way to make Kaz a slapstick even slapstickier than ever. A large part of what makes a curse effective is how much you believe in it. Thank you. I really appreciate that Kaz beats the curse without actually having the talisman. It's because he believes that he can do it, that he can. And I appreciate that he learns he doesn't have the talisman before the, the you know, so it's not that afterwards, oh, this whole time I didn't have the talisman. No, it's, you know, because that's what it would be if, like, you know, 80s or 90s, kind of, yeah. And Kaz convinces the pirate that Mika has cursed him, which, you know, what comes around goes around. If if the it was the pirate who even brought up the idea to Kaz of a curse. So if he hadn't messed around with Kaz, you know, he wouldn't have 
Kaz wouldn't have even known to say there was a curse. And Kaz isn't, like, super vindictive. Episode 11, Station to Station. I did... Uh, let's see... Right, um... Yeah, I, I did find it funny when Kaz was faking having a deep voice overall. They did it too many times, but the first couple were good. Cool to see Hux. This episode does a good job gradually building the tension. You know, Kaz is not right about to be recognized by Pyre from minute one. They build to that, maintaining and growing the, the tension throughout the rest of the episode as well. I found it funny at first when Niku went, oh, uh... Hmm. But then they had him do it like three times. I wish that the first of those he said, oh, the second was, um, uh, and finally, hmm. I think that would have been funnier. Ugh, technicians. Even in the Star Wars Galaxy, people who are really into tech can't stop talking about it. So the woman walks off, and Rucklin, the guy, is by himself, and then he says, I guess I'll just finish this by myself. Sometimes it's very, very difficult to keep these videos PG. And not long after, Kaz tells Niku, slide it in my pack. There might be kids watching, so I'm not going to go there. So Tamara did end up helping when she heard how bad things were on the Colossus that people would die from this. <clears throat> but it is realized that this is what happened by the ISB off uh, uh, Cheerney, I think her name is. Of course, this really isn't hitting me in the feels the way that Callus and Rebels did when he was being used by the Empire, though working for Rebels. And uh, yeah, it just it never reached the the same level for for me as Catalyst and Rebels and it's just like you just did this you know that was fairly late in Rebels and as soon as Rebels ended this show started you know there, there wasn't a huge gap like it would be it would be one thing if like if th if this show did something which possibly it did I don't remember every single detail but if it did something that happened on season five or six of the the Clone Wars. Now Right, and yeah, so they waited about half the season to follow up on Kaz and Tam, you know, now being on opposite sides, though somewhat being friends. After the finale of season one, left that as such an interesting idea, which was also something I saw some, at least one user review criticize. There's some shenanigans with the crane, including having to jump between boxes, run across pipes. If they miss even a little, they lose. So we're definitely in Prince of Persia territory here. I like it. And episode 12, The Missing Agent. And, yeah, so, the Bounty Hunter axe is awesomely designed, and same for ship. Must have sold a lot of toys above that. I might have bought those as well. And, yeah, he shoots the droid. To be, not to be. And Lichi, who acts as an agent for Axe and the First Order, is appropriately loud. Like, no one would think he was a spy because he attracts way too much attention to himself. So, you know, great cover. I approve. And the role using the claw to screech was funny. You just know this was Kaz's plan. He's so innocent, he thinks that's the most horrifying thing you could do to get information. And they fall into the trap. I can walk. I can't. I can't walk. Great fight at the end. This is not good. The situation? Agreed. The show so far? Eh. The First Order has arrived. Right, and at one point, Axe takes off the, the mask. He's like, how are you even cooler without the mask? And that brings us to episode 13, Breakout. Stormtroopers are the plan, but who's on first? 
tense episode. I'm not ready to leave just yet. If I fully join the resistance, the show might get interesting. And episode 14, The Mutiny. You are making me blush. Figuratively speaking, Nitus are physically incapable of blushing. And... I like how, you know, if, if we're, you know, you know, he might be on the spectrum, like, the way, the way his voice goes, like, there's a little bit too, it, it goes a little higher than, than people not on the spectrum, so just, yeah. I, I would consider him a positive depiction of someone on the spectrum. He's so charming, you know, he's not... Like, you know, so the, the negative depictions of people on the spectrum claim that they're, like, dangerous and, you know, like, oh, they have no empathy and, you know, just, yeah. You know, incorrect statements. Now, let's see. Yeah, and the pirates try to take advantage of Niku, but he actually perfectly double-crosses them. What do you know about droids? Well, since you asked, you know, just... You opened the door on that one. It's time for a little fun. Sure, the show's three-fourths over. This might be a time to get fun. B1 frees Niku and the others, later orders them to stand down. Take a long walk into space. Like walking the plank. I like that. Are you trying to mutiny my mutiny? Jinx. And the pirates are exiled. But I'm the spy. Everything I learned about spying I learned from you. You just have to be naive and clumsy and no one will know what your true intentions are. Which brings us to episode 15, The New World. I like them exploring the creepy cave. Very sweet that Niku is friendly in greeting the Avatar 2 fish people. I know they have a name, but let's be honest, a lot of people wouldn't know what I was talking about if I didn't specify that. As usual, the action is tense. I just wish there was more of it in other episodes. And the Queen speaks fluent galactic basic. Very obvious joke. And not really a fan of this thing, you know, you're, why are you talking so slowly? Is there something wrong with you? That's, yeah. You can understand why they mistake Griff, the ex-imperial, for a current First Order. We are the ones trespassing. Thank you, I was hoping someone mature would point that out. And they are allowed to stay. Episode 16, No Safe Place. Some kind of funny stuff at the start with the Queen on the Colossus. The, the Gorg sail, salesman is like, you know, really, really, you know, trying to, oh, I've, I've never met a Queen before, that kind of thing, you know. And Niku is so sad that Kaz is leaving, poor guy. I do really appreciate that there's not some dumb homophobic joke about Niku's strong feelings towards him, holding him and such. You know, it was established that Niku... We actually, we don't know if he is straight or not, but he does not feel, you know, Kaz, you know, made the, the, you know, obviously Kaz wasn't serious. It's a, it's a, um, it's a saying, but he said, Niku, I could kiss you, and Niku diplomatically says, I do not feel the same way, so, let's see. So, so yeah, clearly it's not that that he's in love with with Kaz, and it's good to to promote that you know men can be emotional about being around each other without being gay. You know, it's it's important to also encourage acceptance of gay people, but you know, yeah, it's it's also very important. Both are very important. And Kaz manages to send the missiles right back to the source. As usual, the action is great. And Kaz is great in the pilot seat. Kaz imitating Yeager's voice and having a conversation was never funny, and it went on for way too long. 
Nice to see Niku so happy that Kaz is back. So the blue indigenous aliens on the on the planet fight alongside humans against the evil imperialist. Seems like someone knew Avatar 2 was coming out. I, I realize that by then, you know, Jake is no longer human, but they are also, some of the people who help them are human. Kaz and Tam directly fight. Very tense as they do the hyperspace jump. Niku again, really, really happy Kaz is back and now will stay. And Tam is made second squad commander. Episode 17, Rebuilding the Resistance. Very sweet when the Doza family are reunited. I heard a lot of good things about you, Kasuda. From who? What's with him? How much time do you have? Kaz and Tam fight again. Tamara's promoted but feeling bad. And we get to episode 18, The Escape, part 1. And Tam witnesses genocide, decides she can't support the First Order anymore. I really appreciate that we briefly get a shot of the fish people before the genocide starts. Obviously, with the age rating, it's not going to show them be shot en masse. But it is completely clear that this is not, like, an abandoned place that just really looks like the fish people place. I'm not a fan of Tam. Scaring a little droid? Kylo appears on the hologram, threatens the two Imperials with forcing them to kill each other. Tam uses code to contact Niku. Clever. That has to be Tam. Who else would fire on another tie? Someone who's really tired? <laughs> Can someone please tell me what we're doing and end this insipid bit? And Rucklin says what system the Colossus is hiding in. And that brings us to the finale, episode 19, The Escape, part 2. And yeah, very tense and exciting. And I, I really did not care for the not now Niku bit. Like, just at least see what he has to say. You know that, like... He has a mission to, like, if they were going to do that bit, have it be that he has, you know, he has to send, like, the, the guy who washes the floors or something. I get why Doza wouldn't think, you know, not that he wouldn't realize how important that guy is, but, you know, cleaning is one of those things that, like, if just a little bit of, if, if they went on strike, you would immediately notice, you know, the, the... But but yeah, um, let's see the the what was it um, the uh, yeah you know Doza knows that Niku is working in the control room and would be you know the person to to come charging in if they got a message so and yeah it takes some some doing but. Doza does manage to convince the civilians to fight back, which I quite appreciate. And that is that is a super important message. Like, a lot of fascist rules... Um, yeah, a lot of fascist dictatorships, a lot of the damage done to them was done by civilians. You know, and it's dangerous, as this episode, you know, demonstrates, but... If if you don't, you know, the the and and to be clear, you know, not everybody can participate in that. But if you can, it can be a really, really, you know, it can really mean the world. I like the tension about you know at first, let's see, the Colossus is losing shields, but the the Aces is not doing much damage at all to the. The, the Star Destroyer shields, you know, and CB goes in, you know, still on the, the Star Destroyer, manages to, to turn off the shields, 
so that the the you know yeah that was that was great and they they destroyed the the engines yes the engines and CB gets all Spider-Man to to save the the others and yeah absolutely loved seeing the civilians do guerrilla tactics was surprised that we didn't see like the the they did underline we have gorgs you know there's a there's a shot where they have a bunch of gorgs but then they don't end up using them even though we I don't know maybe they thought that it would be too child friendly and the yeah you know they do already have a guy tripping over the the floor washing thing which I also really appreciate you know he actually got to do some you know there's a lot of Americans who don't think that cleaning is something important enough now yeah and the thing you know team fireball team colossus and yeah so pretty good finale for the season but as a finale for the entire show like it really lacks a tie in to the you know this this came out you know around the same time as the i think i'll just briefly let's see so the yeah right the the okay so it, it yeah it came out after um it came out on Jan january 26 2020 so after the release of rise of skywalker but yeah like you you would figure that the the yeah um you you would really figure that there would be more of a of a tie in and yeah you know the the by the end of this episode there's still not really you know no one on the show has done something that really has a major impact on the sequel trilogy of movies you know yeah of overall like it doesn't there isn't really anything like that on the show and i really think that is a huge missed opportunity it's possible that they were hoping you know if if rise of like let's see they started production on this show i mean by the time the show was airing the let's see the first yeah it started airing october 7th of 2018 so I mean, by then, I believe people already knew, but the, yeah, it was produced earlier. Um, let's see, it's called The Last Jedi, and it came out in 2017. You know, that one was much less positively received than Disney was hoping for, and then Rise of Skywalker also, you know, they made money, to be sure, but a lot of people you know really hated them and and talked about you know oh we're not going to support future star wars stuff so it's possible that if it had you know this is actually the first time one of the um one of the animated star wars shows came out you know before one of the one of the movie trilogies was was done you know, the other ones, you know, Clone Wars was very much about the prequels, came out, you know, started coming out three years after the prequels had all been released. Rebels started airing in 2014 and builds towards the original trilogy. So, yeah, I, you know, and, and with those, they got, you know, Clone Wars had seven seasons, Rebels had four. You can see how they would think, oh, this new trilogy is going to be super popular and we can, you know, keep making a bunch of, of you know, seasons of, of a show. I just, I wish that they had tied it much more into, you know, Poe shows up, Leia shows up. That's, that's about it. And, you know, I, I saw someone point out the Fireball is in the the you know the final battle of you know it, yeah I did mention I'm spoiling everything Star Wars leading up to and including and as I mentioned Rise of Skywalker had to come out before this episode aired yeah you know the fireball is there on 
um, up, above Exegol, I think, you know, at the very end of Rise of Skywalker, so they're still there, you know, they, they survived the time jump between, you know, and, and I do, I, I see how if they had gotten a few more seasons, they could have shown what happened during the time jump, they could maybe have had, you know, maybe, maybe some characters would show up on this show, and they would be like, oh, you know, here's this character's background, and, you know, diligent viewers would be like, oh, that character actually shows up, and, you know, I mean, did we ever learn anything about the Billy Lord played character in the sequel trilogy? I don't think so. I've watched the movies twice, and I don't remember learning anything. I, I don't know if I would particularly have noticed her, if not for the fact that I know that that's actually... You know, she's not playing Leia's daughter in in the sequel trilogy. Leia doesn't have a daughter, but you know that is the the daughter of Carrie Fisher, R.I.P. So you know that's really cool. But yeah, you know, some something like that. Maybe they would have, but I I do think they could have. You know, like the the they bring up the character of Ninu, like. Could that character not have been... Okay, not the Billy Lord character, because the, the episode is set after that, but... Uh, there's... I feel like there's at least one character in Rise of Skywalker that we didn't see in the first two, in, in working in the Resistance, you know, and just, yeah, have that character appear on the show and do something kind of like, Ugh, you know, that's not good. And then when they appear, you know, it's like, oh, it's like redemption for them. Because Star Wars, you know, pretty big on redemption. That's that's always been a major theme of the of the franchise. I I think I acknowledge that they probably would have liked more than two seasons, but I do think they could have done much more. Maybe they could have worked on a ship, like the show's all about the ships. Have them work on a ship, and it's like, oh, right, that's the ship that so-and-so uses in one of the movies, you know. And, and you know, maybe when they get the ship, it's like, I don't know if this thing will ever run again. You know, it's, it's completely destroyed, and they have to really fight, and they have to, you know, steal apart from the First Order or something, you know. Because they do do that. There is an episode where they steal apart from the First Order, but it's for the Colossus, and it's like... The Colossus is never even mentioned in, like, yeah, just, like, you could have had characters that were on the, you know, um, yeah, characters that are in some of the sequel trilogy movies that are working for the Resistance, you could have had them at least briefly appear on the Colossus, and maybe there's, like, maybe they see the First Order do something really awful, and they're like, this is not okay, they get in their ship and they leave and, you know, if you watch the movies, the idea is you, you know, you're supposed to both watch this show and the movies, you know, it's going to be like, oh, that's why that person is so determined, you know. But yeah, um, that brings us to the, the rankings and yeah, um, you know, other than Resistance, I love the the shows the the animated Star Wars shows leading up to this, uh, you know, again other than Droids and Ewoks, haven't watched them, but yeah, um, whether we're talking the overall season, the finale, the season opener, you know, Resistance season one, Resistance season two are the the two worst, you know, Resistance season one the the very worst. And after that, all of the, you know, the, yeah, then it's Clone Wars, each each season better than the last, and Resist Rebels, each better than the last. So, yeah, um, I wish that they had done more to, to live up to their potential, because characters, you know, Mika, Ninu, and Sonara, you could easily have had those actually be, yeah, like, you know, Sonara, you could have, that could have been, um, the, the, 
I forget what her name is, but the the characters played by Carrie Russell. Zori. You know, Zori could easily have been on this show. We could have gotten a little bit more about her, you know, and the... Um, let's see. Yeah, I think... Was this maybe the first... I think Rise of Skywalker was the first time we saw Dominic Monaghan. So he could have showed up on this show. And... Let's see. See, that might be more or less the new. Yeah, we, uh, the Knights of Ren. We never really learn much about them. Maybe one of them could have been, like, you know. Yeah, that could that could have been someone that got, maybe got, um, what's it called? The, the, um, yeah. Someone someone um someone on the Colossus who was convinced by the Wait, no, because they have like training that goes back years. Okay, you could have one of the parents of one of the Knights of Ren uh, you know talk about the the you know I can't believe what happened, you know, I, I thought that they were happy and then this thing happened and now they they went and joined the Knights of Ren, you know, so, something, but just, yeah. That is what I have to say. Uh, there will be, right now it's looking like just two, but there will be a couple of links in the description box to videos that I think are worth watching in addition to my own playlists. And, yeah, may the Force be with you.